And we're live. Uh, I am the Engelsist, joined by my two guests, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld of the Bundist Movement, and Steve Struggle, formerly of the Black Panther, as well as working with various organizations. And um, we are here today to talk about the recent uh, events that most of you will know that have happened in uh, Palestine, um, Palestine in a more in-depth manner than has been covered, because I have a one man especially who's very experienced with the uh, situation in Palestine and has seen it firsthand. Even. So I guess I'll get to the first question, which is, um, so I guess it's hard to say, I I'm, I'm guess we're just covering the mosque attack, attack, which most people know, you know, um, Israeli uh, defense force officers storm into a mosque, start throwing stun grenades whilst it's Ramadan. You know, um, pretty vile videos that I've seen, pretty horrible footage. And um, so I guess I'll ask first, what was your view when you first saw the footage and saw that that happened? Do you want me to answer this uh, question? Is it about Palestine? Yeah, yeah, it's about the original mosque attack, the attack on the mosque that happened recently which uh, wow. kind of brought all of this up. Well, obviously, there was violence before now, but the recent escalation that's happened. Yeah, I saw a video from inside the, the, the uh, Dome of the Rock. Mm. Uh, and then there's the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which are two different uh, locales. Yeah. I, was thinking, I saw the Alaska Mosque. Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but... The, that footage. Uh, well, at the uh, Dome of the Rock, the uh, soldiers, you know, uh, forced their way in uh, while the uh, Muslims uh, were in prayer, used, uh, you know, uh, gas grenades in order to drive people back from the from the entranceway, forced their way in, were marching around, you know, with their boots on the rugs. <laughs> which is, uh, you know, like big no-no. And, uh, you know, there were even women worshippers that I saw in the video that were hiding in the corner. And the soldiers were, uh, you know, not doing anything. They were just walking around in order to make it uh, <clears throat> ultimate humiliation of the, of the Muslims and the Palestinians. So that, you know, I'm sure went throughout uh, the Muslim world. And, uh, and now, you know, the, <clears throat> the Zionist regime is being faced with an international intifada. You know, even yesterday here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, there were 10,000 people who were marching here. So, you know, Palestinian refugees throughout the world, you know, are going to be marching. All the Arab uh, comrades are going to be joining them and all the uh, solidarity organizations in the world as well are joining in as well, who are both uh, non-Jewish and Jewish uh, supporters of the Palestinians. Mm. So, you know, that's uh, part of what uh, provoked the uh, this uh, current war, but it was also the expulsions from the Sheikh Ara, Ara uh, neighborhood. Mm. And uh, the... Uh, <clears throat> suppression of the of the uh, young Palestinians, Shabab as they're called, at the Damascus Gate in uh, East Jerusalem, where I've been quite often. And, uh, you know, previously uh, there was like no military presence there at all. And then they set up two uh, military, uh, permanent military uh, uh, posts on the, uh, on the right and left, you know, of the entranceway. And, uh, uh, you know, previously there was even, you know, like uh, uh, acrobats, you know, who were doing their gymnastics, you know, on the uh, plateau in the steps of the Damascus Gate. And there was no problem, you know. But the soldiers came in and set up barricades and tried to stop people from congregating there, you know, because it was basically turning into a demonstration. Very passive, you're very quiet, you know. People just sitting around there, you know, after breaking their fast. And uh, uh, 
of the Alpha Tier, you know, meal in the evening, which I was following as well myself, you know, in solidarity with the Palestinians, I did Ramadan. So, you know, like after you uh, have fasted all day and you've eaten, you know, you're not about to, you know, start throwing stones or anything, you know, you're just sitting there. But uh, the soldiers came in, they uh, tried to block people off, you know, from congregating. So all that all together, all the various issues, you know, plus announcements of new, you know, colonial settlers coming to the West Bank and in uh, East Jerusalem, that provoked it all. It was just like a whole big package. So it all, it all gets struck at the same time. And it's it's because uh, the media, very well, often mainstream media, does like to present that this is a southern thing, whereas most people who know the history know that this has happened repeatedly, you know, um, encroachings upon uh, Palestinian territory by Israel, or, or what is called Israel anyway, and um, repeat, like repeated um, changes in what the um, drawn lines are, because there isn't, there, there isn't any um, idea that, that the Israeli state, the, the, um, wants to retain any level of Palestine existing in what they have claimed. I mean, obviously, if we go back, this was a British invention after, uh, you know, World War II, because they owned Palestine, if uh, anybody didn't know. And then yeah. um, they, award, they gave this land away to uh, people who called themselves Zionists and... Um, uh, advocated for um, making a state which had partially existed historically, but had been away for two thousand years at this point. Mm. Yes, yes. But uh, there's uh, a number of points that I, I wrote down about this that I, I want to make that nobody else has made, but uh, are very important. First of all what I call the Zionist state. I don't use the word Israel because Israel was initially uh, the name of the Jewish people as a whole, even before Jewish uh, uh, people came into uh, Canaan, as it was called at the time. So <clears throat> the Zionist state is uh, justifying everything and anything it does, you know, by claiming the right of self-defense after making the provocations and expecting the... Uh, submerged population of Palestinians to just take it, you know, accept whatever, you know, the, the Zionists are, are interested in dishing out at the time. So, you know, the Zionist state is giving the right of self-defense. But if this is a right, then do not the Palestinians have a right to self-defense? If they are claiming that it is the state that has a right to self-defense and that Palestine is not a state, then how come they were claiming that the Palestinian Authority was responsible for vaccinating the Palestinians because they were supposed to be considered a state, according to Oslo, and that the Zionist state had no longer any responsibility for the occupied population of Palestinians. So on the one hand, they're claiming that the Palestinian Authority should be taking care of its own people and its own territory. And on the other hand, they're claiming that uh, this political entity, I'll call the Palestinian Authority, Gaza has no right to defend itself when attacked, even though they had not attacked the Zionist state initially. Um, so the interesting thing is that Hamas government, the elected government, you know, which is installed in Gaza, is protecting the Palestinians of East Jerusalem. So now they're extending their political authority to all the Palestinians, as was the case in the election of uh, 2006 when they were elected, and the Fatah party that had established the government there previously with Mohammed Abbas was no longer supposed to be the government, but the Fatah party refused to allow the Hamas party to take power. So I, the initial contradiction is apparent. I would just like to say sorry uh, for anybody in the audience about the audio popping. I don't know how to solve that, but there is a bit of a popping uh sorry about all of that but i it's out my hands <laughs> well if i could just say something here um 
you know, what gets me about the whole thing growing up um, is I've never seen Israel to me are like the police in, 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 the, in, in the black community, in the brown communities, in the working class white communities. They just do what they want. They get away with everything and nothing's ever done. And I think that's what makes this whole situation so frustrating for the Palestinians. They know unless they fight back in different ways, there will be no there will be no sense of, of justice or recourse because the Israelis get away with everything. And because mm -hmm. they have the allies of, of the United States and Western Europe, they feel pretty much emboldened to be the bullies and and the torturers that you're seeing them demonstrate right now. So to me, that's that's the biggest hip hypocrisy. They claim this and they claim that. When they come to the Palestinians, they claim they can do it, whatever they want to do, whenever they want to do it. And too bad if they don't like it. And that's that that's that's that's, that's what's feeling the outrage. I think mm. with, within the Palestinian community and and throughout the world. Oh yeah, and the thing is, is that there is this you know, constant international condemnation of humanitarian groups who, at the end of the day, won't do much. There, there hasn't, like, the, the international condemnation always comes down on Israel when they, you know, attack innocent people. And when, uh, the, and this has happened repeatedly. But nothing is done because of it, because the US and, and this country and... And um, most of the West support Israel. Hell, even, I will say this, even China is the third largest trading partner with Israel. There is nobody who, who tries, even if they condemn them, there is nobody who actually confronts them besides very few governments. And the, the governments everybody generally knows, you know, Iran, Syria, blah, blah, blah. So, which at some point supports... Um, support Palestinians, but even then, um, it varies from place to place, and they have way less proportional power as compared to the U.S. or most Western countries. Yep, you're right. There's been only verbal condemnation, but mm. it has come from uh, some very high places, Secretary General of the United Nations, and also the recent you know, diplomatic partners from the Arab world have also condemned uh, the Zionist state, you know, verbally only. So the next step is sanctions, which would be very difficult. The United States has vetoed even a discussion of the current crisis in Palestine in the UN Security Council. So this Biden administration is going full-blown Zionist, huh? And uh, they're getting the criticism for it from within the Democratic Party. And, but uh, even then, the Democratic Party for a very long time has held the Zionist position. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. But uh, Sanders and the squad, you know, like are criticizing them. And they will uh, have their credibility increased as, uh, as uh, the attacks continue. Usually these uh, wars last for two weeks. It's been seven days now. But after two weeks, people get fed up enough, you know, that... Uh, that the leadership there, you know, who are not even elected now, you know, who don't even have, you know, like political position, who don't even have a government. <clears throat> After about two weeks, they usually uh, <clears throat> back down and they stop attacking Gaza. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm very uh, <clears throat> worn out right now. But and there's another point I'd like to make here <clears throat> is that there is no government in the Zionist state right now, because, you know, when Netanyahu was charged by the President Rivlin, you know, to form a government, his uh, deadline, you know, expired. And so it was uh, handed over to uh, Gantz to try to form a government. And he was trying to set up a co coalition with the right-wing party of Bennett and together with the Palestinian <coughs> Islamic party, Ra'am. And it was coming together, but <coughs> It was never accepted and it was never voted on. There was never a, a vote of confidence in the uh, parliament, in the Knesset. So <clears throat> when the, the Zionist military started to attack Gaza, the Iran political uh, 
leadership of the Palestinians withdrew from this uh, proposed, uh, not even a coalition, it was like a, an agreement to form a government. So there was no possibility of a majoritarian government with uh, Gantz uh, as the leader. Uh, so there is no government being formed. There is no possibility of a government being formed at this time. And yet, you know, this state is waging war on the Palestinians. How can they do this? You know, there's no legitimate political authority within that state to do so. So it's, you know, like a big farce. But nonetheless, all the Maker. Zionist parties are going along with it, you know, because, you know, the principle of Zionism amongst all of these parties is that when the state is at war, then they will all jump behind, you know, the war without criticism because fundamentally the Palestinian people, not even the Palestinian Authority, not even Hamas government, all the Palestinian people are considered to be the enemy. This was, you know, uh, you know hit home to me, you know, when I, I was in uh, Jerusalem and I went to the um, central bus station and I didn't know that there was another, you know, central bus station for the Palestinians. So I went to the central bus station for the Israelis and I asked for a ticket to go to, you know, Ramallah or Nablus. And the guy behind the counter, he like, just freaked out, you know, like he, he pushed his back, himself back from the counter, back from the co computer and said, but that's the enemy, he shouted, you know, and there was like all these soldiers standing around behind me, you know, like, so it was getting, you know, like a bit tense. And he said, you know, that's the enemy, you can't go there. So, you know, like I said, you know, of course I can go there. Or, you know, like I want to contact the university there. I'm an academic. And like he still kept on shouting at me. So eventually, you know, like I left. But it's, you know, this mentality is incredible, you know, that it's like a, a war against a people in the name of another people, even though half the Israeli population are opposed to the occupation in the first place. It's the most bizarre, you know, like country you could ever think of. Very strange. So there's that point, you know, that there's no and political agency to doing any such, you know, like war. And uh, I am aware of, you know, the the, the Democrats um, hyper focusing on the fact that, um, let's say, Israel, the Zionist state has um, uh, whatever gay marriage, whatever. The religious right seems to think it's from this point of, uh, you know. Bibli biblical importance you know that it's uh, i mean in revelation they do say um, which is why the religious rights support um you know zionism is because if the if the um apparently if the jews uh, resettle um, where they claim israel currently is um the jesus christ comes back and all of the jews are cast into hell that's actually like part of why the religious right support support um, uh, Israel, which is a very anti-Semitic reason. Yes. So the the angle that the religious right come of this is, in fact, quite will. I mean, according to their faith, cause a massive deaths of Jewish people, and yes. the the Orthodox community in. Israel is massively opposed to the army. I know about that um, quite a bit. And it's. Yes. And once you connect all the dots, you seem to understand why uh, that uh, there is there is no Jewish state. There is only a state of colonialism um, based off of a half half baked ideology with um, some ver very squinted at readings of the Torah. Um, you know, to try and justify their bullshit. Yes, yes. Now, uh, revolutions is uh, revelations uh, is uh, is not part of Judaism. You know, the Zionists are following. Mm. You know, uh, the Christian religion in, in setting up a, a Zionist state. In fact, Zionism was invented by Protestant Christianity, first you know enunciated by Oliver Cromwell, who wanted to send the British. Jewish population to Palestine to colonize it for the British Empire. And then Napoleon had a similar idea and uh, changed his mind, you know, and uh, 
uh, for the uh, Jewish people in France and uh, offered assimilation and even uh, forcing uh, the Jewish population to change their names to be French names, <laughs> that much, mm -hmm. that degree of assimilation, while uh, proposing the initial uh, Zionist scheme, you know, to the Jewish people in Morocco, who we wanted to send to Palestine to colonize it for the French Empire. Then the British uh, took over yeah. again yeah. with uh, Balfour, uh, which itself is not a legitimization of the Zionist state because it only refers to a Jewish homeland in Palestine. Those are the words, Jewish homeland in Palestine, it mentions Palestine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's no legitimacy, you know, that the Zionists can claim, you know, even from the Balfour Declaration, nor the uh, Treaty of San Remo, which used the same, you know, wording in 1920. And uh, even in the UN General Assembly uh, resolution that was supported by the, by the Stalinist regime uh, in uh, the USSR at the time, unfortunately, uh, of 1947, right. this territory was, you know, uh, ignored. The frontiers of that territory were ignored by the Zionist militias who uh, went in and, and took over, you know, twice as much territory by 1949. So the only legitimacy that they can claim, you know, in international law by the UN General Assembly are the 1947 Partition Resolution, which is half of what uh, the uh, 48 occupied territories are. So there's all mm. sorts of uh, points of uh, illegitimacy here, <clears throat> which I hope yeah. will be taken up by the International Criminal Court, you know, who are investigating the war crimes committed by Israel uh, mm. at this time. Yeah, there is a, but yeah, so when you look at it from a religious angle, it's from a very Christian point of view and a very, a very like Protestant uh, history to it in the narrative and it's a very anti-semitic reason to support something as well as um and most of the countries especially the soviet union later later suffered for supporting it when uh, the labor zionist um leader at that time then went to the soviet union a few years later and um said that for the jewish population to it said that um, the government, that the Soviet government said that the Jewish population w were to go to Israel. However, this wasn't actually fact, and and it caused a lot of confusion because um, because that wasn't actually the case. There wasn't any planned, you know, movement of like forcible movement of um, Jews out of uh, the Soviet Union. Um, there was there was like you know links obviously to the the government of Israel its founding because it did support it but there was no implication that they were going to send all of the Jewish population of the Soviet Union to to, to Israel Man, which, which was one of the things that immediately severed the ties it had hmm. I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna ask a question to Dr. Weisfield and to the English why why do both of you feel there is the difficulty what is the what must be overcome by the dominant capitalist states to check israel because they don't states can check states yes they can a state can check another state they can do it many ways yeah but i see nothing i see no i see literally uh like english was mentioned the soviet union okay I see no one politically, economically, even using the bully pulpit effectively to check Israel. They don't stop. This is what this was always bothered me as a revolutionist. It doesn't stop. So if nothing can stop you, what the do the closest, people do? I'm the closest thing I can think is um, the most uh, anti to um, the Zionist state right now is probably Iran um, because of its ties. Okay. However, yes. Yes, I, I agree. The, 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 the issue is, is that Iran would essentially have to get into World War Three for, um, for Israel, for the Zionist state to ever back down in any step. So there would essentially have to be like a threat of an actual Cold War by Iran on Israel. That's not yeah. possible because uh, Israel yeah. has, a nuclear, has yeah. the nuclear bombs and they would use them. I mean, I do, I do know that 
I do know that Iran has uh, nuclear potential. I I know no, to no. an extent, but I don't think they've built any weapons yet. No, no, they don't have any nuclear bombs, and uh, they consider it a matter of principle, according to Islam, not to make any nuclear bombs as well, because they consider it to be uh, an inhuman weapon, and uh, but, they're uh, and they don't have the capacity to even build a nuclear bomb because you know you have to purify uranium uh, uh, to achieve uh, uh, uranium two thirty eight, you know, like a purity of ninety three percent. And uh, even the advanced uh, centrifuges that they have now only go to 63%. So it's, uh, you know, physically uh, not possible for Iran to have any nuclear the weapons. But thing... If they were losing a war against Iran, you know, uh, uh, on the basis of, you know, an exchange of missiles or whatever, well, you know, they would use a nuclear bomb or they would bomb, you know, nuclear facilities, which would in effect create a, a dirty bomb, you know, effect, you know, with the distribution of radioactivity over uh, a large uh, segment of the uh, of the country there so it's that's not possible what is possible the only is that thing council... yes yes please continue anglist oh yeah the only thing i could think is that there are allies with iran that have nuclear capability but russia current russia is very 50 50 on whether they support palestine or not in fact, it's they are they are opportunistic in that respect. Um, uh, I do think that they would support Iran because they are their main oil, one of their main oil resources, and don't have as close ties to the Zionist state. But this, but this would be an international. Th this would be um, one minute to midnight on the doomsday clock if there was a threat of war between the Zionist state and Iran. Yes, no, it's Pakistan that would be the only possible, you know, a military backup, you know, to uh, Iran or the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And Pakistan right. must have a nuclear bomb. But my issue isn't, a, isn't necessarily a military confrontation. I'm saying I see no one, no states effectively in any, any arena, uh, let, let's just say political, social, civil society able to stop Israel. That's what bothers me. They seem yeah. unstoppable in anything they do. And that's what um, that's what concerns me. In spite of all the civil society, um, liberal, progressive uh, movements to uh, against, even with BDS, it, and I may say, you know, they seem to be very effective in like nothing can stop them. And this is what concerns me. Because they can go to Le they can go to Lebanon, they can go to Iraq, they can go to Iran, they can go to um, they can bomb the West Bank, they can bomb the Gaza Strip. Whatever they do, nothing stops them. They don't stop, and this is what concerns me. Because when you have that kind of situation, that feels that you know that can feel quite irrational, or you know um, a hope. I mean, a sense of hopelessness. Among those who are victimized, and among their, their, their among their their supporters, so I'm just kind of throwing out throwing out this this call: Can we ever come up with some tactics or strategies, some strategies that I are mean, going to I, win? I am aware that there has recently from oh from Jason um, that there has been a response by Hezbollah in Lebanon to the recent events. Um, there is also, but there have also been Palestinian forces that have fled to Lebanon that have made response. However, the the thing is, is that all of the international pressure in the world doesn't matter to uh, to the Zionist state. The, the the they because they are backed by the two by the two main more than the two main imperialist powers. Basically, all of the imperialist powers have at least a pinky in the pie that is the Zionist state. So the thing yeah. is that there will be no full condemnation. Uh, yes. Yeah. The, now, Hezbollah has not really stepped into this confrontation yet. There was a spontaneous demonstration that went to the border there because the Palestinians uh, were calling upon uh, the Palestinian refugees, basically, all around you know, the Zionist state to, to march towards the border and to cross it as civilians in, the, in a nonviolent way to confront the uh, 
the military. And even if they would be killed, you know, in doing so, they would be demonstrating that uh, that it was a merely a force and not a political uh, legitimacy that is determining the outcome of the uh, confrontations. And so uh, convincing more people that they have to uh, speak out against uh, the Zionist state's war and the Palestinian people. But the only way for uh, any uh, of uh, <clears throat> the opposition to, uh, to actually intervene is by way of the UN Security Council, which could vote to impose sanctions on the Zionist state or could vote to send in, you know, the blue helmets as a peacekeeping force to stop the uh, Zionist military from killing the Palestinians, especially in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. <clears throat> However, uh, the United States is imposing a veto on the Security Council, not allowing even a discussion to take place. So mm. it's not likely the United States is going to allow the Security Council to vote, you know, sanctions or a blue helmet peacekeeping force to go in to uh, Palestine to do this job. Now, oh yeah, why, and why, this... do, why does the United States and the other countries let, you know, uh, the Zionist state get away with all of this? In answer to Steve, well, it's because, you know, Israel is basically an extension of the Occidental Christian nation states into the Orient. They are the uh, a military, uh, uh, front line of the war, historic war of the Occident against the Orient. And this hasn't been called a crusade in the past. And I would say that a crusade, the 11th crusade, and because I consider the Holocaust to be the 10th crusade, this is the 11th crusade into the Orient by the West, Western Occidental Christian nation states. And the Zionist regime is basically an ally of the Christian nation states. This is a religious war, and that's why it's provoking an Islamic jihad. Now there is an international jihad happening, which is fighting against the Western Crusade in various ways and th uh, throughout you know, best, uh, you know, the world as a whole. Now, in response to the permanent war against the Palestinian people by the Zionist state, what is happening is an international intifada. And uh, this is uh, politically legitimate. And when the Zionists claim the right of Jewish self-determination, they are being very hypocritical because, you know, do they respect the, the right of self-determination really? You know, how can they claim the right of self-determination if they're denying the very same right, you know, to the Palestinian people? So if the right of self-determination mm. is a principle and it can only be considered as such if it is to be claimed by all concerned, then the right to self-determination that they claim on behalf of the Jewish people is illegitimatized, you know, because they're denying the very same right to the Palestinian people. And even some of the uh, former uh, Zionists, you know, mm -hmm. are coming to agree to this, you know, like Peter Beinhardt of Jewish Currents magazine. So their uh, hegemony over the Jewish people is falling apart. And Jewish people are recognizing that the Zionist state is not acting on their behalf. They cannot claim the right to the Jewish self-determination. In fact, you know, majority of the Jewish people don't even live in Israel, don't want is, you know, the Zionist state to be doing this. And even half of the Jewish Israelis are opposed to the occupation and have been demonstrating, you know, uh, at uh, Balfour Street, you know, near uh, Netanyahu's uh, uh, prime minister, you know, residence, even though he's not prime minister. The last such demonstration was, you know, uh, 50,000 people were demonstrating there. And of course, the international media doesn't cover this because the international media follows the basic paradigm of the Christian nation states and they will support uh, this uh, interest uh, because you know half of the media yeah. even in the United States is controlled by the Christian uh, Christian sources half the media uh, is also controlled by a lot of uh, Jewish people but they tend to be pro-Zionist and they don't rep they're not representative of the Jewish people as a whole in the United States either so it's the Zionist media that I would uh, mm. point out, you know, is not covering these demonstrations against Netanyahu by the Jewish Israelis. So, you know, basically, the uh, is, you know Zionist military is a, a mercenary force who are being paid for by the United States at the rate of three point eight billion dollars a year, and they are sent, you know, to put down the Palestinian people 
uh, keep control of Jerusalem, which was announced, announced as a uh, end of the uh, Crusades, you know, by General Allenby when he walked into Jerusalem in 1917, when they took it uh, away from the Ottoman Muslim Empire. So, you know, when you look into it, you know, basically this is a Christian crusade, you know, that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, being uh, jumped on, you know, by the uh, Zionist, you know, uh, movement, you know, which uh, have no other opportunity to uh, gain control over this uh, territory. And they do so in the name of the Jewish people, but that is uh, mm. a myth and a falsification. There's been no mandate, you know, for the Zionist state to claim that they're acting on behalf of the Jewish people. A majority of the Jewish people don't have a vote and, uh, and they're not being granted a vote, you know, by the Zionist state either. They just consider that Jewish people have to be slaves to Zionists and because they say so. I would, um, I would just like to, um, since we're probably only going to run this for a couple, a couple more minutes, I was thinking, uh, I will address the, um, I'll skip some of the questions because I don't think we necessarily, I think we covered some of it in the discussions. But I would like to touch upon, I, I would, there has been an armed response by Hamas. Um, I've seen the videos, um, you know, and there, and there will be fighting. There's always been fighting. But we must remember that there, is n there isn't a war. A war is a meeting of two, um, a war, a meeting of two countries. And the Zionist state does, one, isn't, doesn't speak in the name of the Jewish people and is occupying the land. And two, a disproportionately more powerful than the uh, resistance that is uh, still left. That there and there is no real option besides resistance. In fact, um, when Yasser Arafat in the nineties um, came to some peace agreement, the the occupation didn't stop. In fact, it's just continued since the nineties. And the now the PLO is no longer armed and has been supplanted by the Palestinian Authority, as far as I'm aware, uh, as a uh, as uh, speaking in. Uh, that region so this is not a war this is a what this is a defense and um a, against the slaughter yes uh, there's an important point to consider here as well that uh, backs up your point in that mm -hmm. while is you know the zionist state is using uh missiles with uh you know, uh, an explosive uh, charge of up to 250 kilograms of TNT, the uh, mortars that are being fired by Hamas don't have an explosive charge. They're just a flying pipe. And none of the media mentions this. They always call it, you know, rockets, but they're not rockets. They're mortars. That's the name given to a projectile which doesn't have a guidance system, which doesn't have an explosive charge. It's just a flying pipe. And, you know, there's very few, you know, seven yeah. Israelis have been killed in all of this against, you know, 145 mm. or 165 now. So, so yeah. you know, Israel is uh, attacking the Palestinians on a ratio of 10 to 1. But this is better, actually, under the uh, uh, international pressure than what used to be the uh, policy of, uh, of the Zionist state under the General Sharon, who became prime minister, when... He uh, overtly stated, you know, that he would retaliate a hundred Palestinian or Arab deaths to any one Israeli death, and so they're using, you know, the uh, you know the, the deaths of Israelis as an excuse to go and commit genocide against the Palestinian people and Arab peoples. So, you know, it's it's pathetic. You know, it's, it's so pathetic. You know what the media is all about. And, uh, you know, it's uh, a question of uh, mobilizing enough uh, people to uh, make, uh, like the Canadian government still supporting, you know, the Zionist regime as well. And, uh, you know, the, the, we have to make the governments, you know, in respective countries back down under, you know, popular pressure, which will happen in another week. But, you know, the Zionist regime is going to get away with, you know, you know, murdering the Palestinians for another week or so. So that's the state of affairs. Okay, thank you. Mm. And I've I've seen the mortar footage, and 
The only explosions I've seen is... Well, I'm pretty sure a motor creates shrapnel when it contacts with something, and it's just the force that causes, yeah. you know, damage. And and the only time I've seen an explosion is what, like you'd think when it hits cars and gasoline, you know. Yeah. The, pre the, the pressure hits a car, it makes it explode. As compared to ballistic missiles funded directly by... Um, by um, America and the Iron Dome defense system, which is one of the most advanced mil missile defense system in the entire world, and is um, you can see the footage. And I'm not, and as an engineer, I'm not going to deny it's a, it's um, it's w one of the most advanced um, things I've ever seen. You know, in terms of like uh, arm technology compared to people firing motors. The, the difference the difference in technology is like um, a, an army in the 1940s compared to an army um, to, to modern day. Yes, yes. But the Iron Dome defense missile system of the Zionist state is not working. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, now regarded by the Israelis as a, a false... Uh, sense of security because it only stops you know one third of the mortars that are coming from gaza from hamas so the um, israelis are beginning to doubt the wisdom of uh, you know waging such a genocidal military assault which is called a war you know against the palestinians so mm -hmm. this should be producing you know uh, much more opposition amongst the israelis you know because they realize that they have no real defense against even the the fear of uh of uh, of being uh of their home being hit you know by a mortar so you know the very uh uh unstable situation here and we'll see what's going to happen but uh it's uh so frustrating i wish i was there you know because in the west bank you know when the internationals were there joining the palestinians the demonstrations they didn't use live fire because they didn't want to uh suffer the consequences of, uh, of shooting or, or killing, you know, an international such as myself, uh, you know, in case, you know, including, you know, the prospect of, uh, of shooting, uh, you know, a Jewish person who might be, you know, with the Palestinians because they, I made sure that the, the soldiers there knew that, the, that I was Jewish and that I was there together with the Palestinians. So they didn't use, you know, live fire at that time, mm -hmm. but now they're using live fire. And 11 Palestinians were killed uh, in one day, you know, two days ago, on the Friday. And, uh, yeah. but even then, you know, they're still, you know, they were still willing to use, you know, like, uh, 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 um, violence against uh, internationals such as myself, mm. you know, uh, at other demonstrations using a rubber co coated bullets. I was hit by a rubber coated bullet in the, in the, Shin, when I kicked a, a glass canister away from me one time when I was doing a video. And another time, you know, because I was, you know, putting down, you mm. know, the soldiers at the over prison, you know, they, they opened up the gate, came out, started throwing gas grenades, you know, at the media with whom I was standing with. And uh, one soldier who I was uh, denouncing in Yiddish, you know, so he would know for sure, you know, who he was confronting, he threw a gas grenade at me that was a special type with an exploding head to it and it hit me in the chest. So they're quite willing to attack Jewish people as well. They are so Zionist in their mentality that they've lost any sense of being Jewish. Furthermore, about the, uh, the Russian Jewish population that was eventually you know, allowed to uh, emigrate you know, from the Soviet Union, before that, you know, there was two million Russian Jewish uh, people who immigrated into uh, the Zionist state. Before that, 70% of the Israeli population were Arabs. I got to repeat this for you. You won't believe this, but 70% of the Israeli Jewish population were Arabs, Jewish Arabs from Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, who went to the Zionist state, you know, expecting to be received and given great privileges. And they didn't want to endure, you know, the, uh, the uh, discrimination that they were subjected to, you know, in the Arab states because they were Jewish, because they were, because the, uh, Muslim Arabs were taught that all Jews were Zionists. And so they turned against the local Jewish population 
And so the Jewish population wanted to flee in order to protect themselves. So they formed 70% uh, of the uh, Israeli population at, at that point. And of course, they were dominated by the Ashkenazi white supremacist, you know, uh, Zionist leadership. So there was a big confrontation, you know, building up there. But their power was diminished when the Jewish uh, Russian population came of 2 million. And so now the Jewish Arab population is 50%. And then they formed the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. of course, and they didn't get very far. And there was even a case, you know, last week in which some, you know, Zionist fascists, you know, went and pulled out a guy from his car thinking that he was a Palestinian Arab when he was actually a Jewish Arab. And they beat him up, nearly killed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a very volatile situation. And it shows the complexity of this uh, whole context as well. And uh, eventually, you know, the... Um, Savaradim and the Mizrahim, as they are called, the Jewish Arabs, are going to have to turn against the Zionist state in mass, together with the uh, uh, Orthodox community, which has turned against the Zionist state, even though their political parties were in the government because they didn't want their children to be drafted into the military because they wanted them to just go and study in yeshiva. Uh, because basically they're uh, mm. Judaic pacifists, even though their political parties are joining in a government that is uh, militaristic. You know, it's, there's contradiction upon contradiction, and I hope that it will explode sooner than, rather than later. Okay. Mm. okay. So I feel like I'm going to end this soon, if that's okay. So if uh, any of you want to give some closing statements, I've, this has been a very good talk. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much for this. You know, this is so important to get all this information out, you know, and there's no other way. You know, you're the only outlet, Anglist, you know, who I've been able to express these points with. It's such a shame, you know, that the, that the media, the liberal media, and even the socialist media, you know, are not willing, you know, to, to make the, uh, you know, fundamental differentiation between being Jewish and being Zionist. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope in uh, you have invited me to Palestine. I hope I get to receive that invitation as soon as possible. But uh, yes. it's been it's been lovely talking, and um, thank you, anybody, for watching. I'll, I'll post this link places. Sorry for any audio issues, but it's been lovely, and I'm going to end the broadcast um, now. Thank you, uh, everybody, for watching. Thank you.